one month ago Luke Cage released on Netflix and now let's talk about it so I finished watching the series in one day uh, took you a bit longer yeah mainly because of my stupid internet but, um, shall that was we not just, helpful should we just get into the the thoughts on the series uh, yes. this will have uh, some spoilers so watch your series first I, I would definitely recommend watching it to anyone that hasn't seen it what about uh, you? it's a very good series it's mm. basic general Marvel quality yeah so watch it no no reason not to unless you don't have the time I guess you guys haven't heard about me have you I'm about sick of always having to buy new clothes. So, should we um start with what did you think of it in comparison to the other Netflix series? Well, in comparison to the other Netflix series, I thought the tone was very different. Well, obviously, because it's set in a completely different part of New York. It's set in the harbor. Mm. It was like, Whereas, also as well as that the the ending. The last, I think, two episodes were a lot less serious. They weren't yes. stupid, but they no. they were less serious, weren't they? Yeah, I found that with um, um, with Diamondback. So do you do you have a like an order of your favourites? The favourite Netflix. Yeah. Ooh, that's a difficult one. Because I would say this is in the middle. My favourite is Jessica Jones. And Luke Cage would be my second favourite. I'd put it on par with season one, Daredevil. Okay. I think probably most people, Luke Cage would be their least favourite, just to be honest. But yeah. personally, I, I liked him on Daredevil. Well, to be honest, I went into Daredevil knowing a bit more about him. I went into Luke Cage knowing only what they'd revealed in Jessica Jones. I think going into Luke Cage without reading the comics is probably better because there are quite a few things changed. Yes. And there were a the lot only... of references to the comics, but a lot of it had changed. Yeah, like if if you haven't read the comics, don't worry because there are a few references. They'll probably go over your head, apart from the extremely obvious one of uh, the comic costume, which. Yeah. It wasn't subtle, <laughs> let's be honest. That I liked seeing it, <laughs> but it wasn't subtle. No, it was a nice little Easter egg for those who were in the know. Yeah, but I think with with Jessica Jones, the way they showed her original costume, that way, I think if you didn't know that was her costume, no. it would probably go over your head, but I think you'd be able to work out that that was his original costume, the way it was presented yeah. in Luke Cage. I don't even like these niggas, man. What were your thoughts on the main man, Luke? I thought he was... Well, let's start with Mike Coulter, how he did with him. I thought, again, Marvel picked the perfect person. Yeah, I, I thought that as well. Um, I saw a few people complaining, saying that... Um, he wasn't perfect, but he fit the role perfectly for me. Yeah. They uh, might be the people that don't know the character of Luke Cage as well. I, 
I did think he said "Sweet Christmas" a little bit too much. Yeah, because that was in the comics. I, I think he says different like catchphrases instead of swearing, whereas here it was it's one just one line. "Sweet Christmas." So it, it wasn't that bad, but I just would have preferred if one time he say "Sweet Christmas," another time he say something else, that sort of thing. Yeah, it was overused a bit. Yeah, if it was kind. Of slotted in in between others if it was still the main one that he used but he alternated it occasionally because you can um it's not that american thing where every character has to have a catchphrase it's like the, the marvel films a lot of that is made in places yeah. outside of america but then the series you can tell that they are american productions so that's one example that he has to have a catchphrase yeah. So, um. That's... Oh, do you want to move on to the villains? Yes, I. So, there were three villains. There was Cottonmouth, uh, Mariah Stokes, Stokes, and Diamondback. Who... Uh, do you want to start off? First of all, who would you say was your. Not exactly favourite, but I think you know what I mean. Of the three. Okay. So. At first. I thought Cottonmouth because he was really threatening, uh, quite dominant as well. But then um, when it just throws you off and he just gets killed off by, Mar by Mariah, I thought, yeah. that well, she's quite quite strong. But then she just never showed that side of her again throughout the rest of the series. So I was quite I would disappointed about that. Mm. I it thought they could horrible, have. I thought they could have done it even just once more near the yeah. end. If if after I thought at that point she would flip and she would replace him, but then they just got in Diamondback. So yeah, they were they were well well done villains, but yes. compared to last year's Kilgrave. I thought, I've got to say, I think he is my favourite Marvel villain so far. Kilgrave? Yeah, like in the actual cinematic mm. universe. Yeah, he's definitely mine. But Jessica Jones might even be my favourite Marvel um, MCU thing. Wow. Ooh, Even actually, though I like films more than I like TV series, I just think Jessica Jones handled so perfectly. Yeah, and, um, I, I see what you mean there. Mm. It's, Especially because it's, it, it's, it's so unbelievably close to the comics as well, which well, is pleasing. I when... didn't really read the Jessica Jones comics. I hadn't even heard of her, to be honest, before the series was announced. And then, um, I did a little bit of research. It's sort of her. the same. It's the same overarching story. She still, um, you know, gets together with Luke Cage for you know a night. That it's the overarching story is the same. So that was good. And um, so, what's a good villain without a good weapon? What did you think of the Judas bullets? And I don't know if they were named, but the punching things, where I could punch didn't, people. I don't recall them giving them a name. There mm. is probably a name somewhere on the internet. Yeah, but, but what do you I think those love. Two weapons? I love the way it was incorporated that it was Hammer Tech that he was yeah. using. Yeah, that was good. Justin Hammer. I, I actually didn't notice that at first. I thought, okay, Hammer was... Oh, I, that! I noticed it straight away. <laughs> it, it took me it took me a second to remember. Even though Iron Man 2 is one of their weaker films, it's got the connection. Yeah, it's, it's really smart how Marvel doesn't shy away from referencing it. Like Star Wars, you know, I love Star Wars, but they shy away from referencing the prequels, whereas Marvel, yeah. they're, they're still proud of their... I wouldn't say bad... They're proud of their lesser accomplishments. Yes, yeah. they don't. They don't always just reference the best ones. No. They're honest. Um. So, 
yeah, the Judas Bullets, they they were quite good. Uh, I was definitely a fan of the punching things, though. Yes. I know a, someone I'd like to use that on. Yes, I, I know don't, you do. Don't, don't call the... Pl- don't call the police. It's a joke. It's a joke. Don't section me. To be honest, I think we all know somebody that we would like to do that to. So, uh, no, I'm sure there might already be one. But um, if you, if you know games, Gary's mod. I'm sure someone's going to make that on Gary's mod. Yes, I That's know Gary's well. mod well. Yeah, just punch them and they go flying. <laughs> it wasn't that funny in, in the context of the series, but. In yeah. a game, it would be funny. I think I might have to have a look for that after this. Alright, so... They they were good weapons, but the thing that worries me is that... These are really good, powerful weapons. So, why do they not appear in the other Marvel properties? But you could definitely take down Iron Man with them. Yeah. So... If there was Spider-Man Homecoming, that's the next thing Iron Man's probably going to appear in, right? He is definitely... Well, Tony Stark is definitely going to be appearing in it, it's confirmed. Yeah, so... As long as they have a reason why that isn't going to appear, or it is going to appear in the future, that's the one little thing that worries about it, because it's such a good thing, it wouldn't make sense for them to just go out. I would like them to use them again in some way. Mm. Okay, so move on to cameos. There was the um, Trish cameo. It well, I, I don't know if you'd really call it a cameo, but she. I can't remember which episode it was, but in the opening one of the episodes, you heard um, Trish talks talking about um, the Luke Cage situation, and I thought that was smart because. Obviously, it's connected to Jessica Jones through Luke Cage and one or two oh, mentions yeah. of yeah. Jessica. But um, that was another thing just to connect them even more. And there was uh, the woman, is she Night Nurse? Yes. Yeah. Claire Temple, It's she is obviously Night Nurse. Yeah. I, I figured out that, that, well, basically from Daredevil. Yeah, so there's that, but Trish getting in on this uh, is another way of blending the universe, making them even more connected. I really hope one day she gets to be in a Marvel movie because you've seen, have you seen all that stuff about how people are saying it will be a bit hard to cross over like Luke Cage and getting Luke Cage into Infinity War, something like that, because of the scheduling, they don't know what's going to happen. Because Trish is a minor character, I think that could easily work. Because... Even if they include Night Nurse in Infinity War, because Mm. of um, what developed in the series, between Luke and Claire... Yeah, I think I... it's more likely if she appears that he's going to be there as well. That was actually one one thing I wasn't too happy about in this series. And this no. is this is the thing probably I'm the only one um thinking this. But I don't like seeing Luke uh with too many women other than Jessica. I uh, know just, what you mean. When... I don't know I don't know if I'm allowed to say it because it's not spoilers because it's not happened. I don't know if it's actually going to happen in the series, but in the comics, if you read the comics, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I do know what you're on about. And uh, also, there was the Stan Lee cameo. Did you spot him? Oh, I think I did. It, it was another. It was another fake out where he wasn't actually in it, but it was um when you know I've forgotten the rapper's name, but you know when he. Luke goes into like a corner shop and saves it from being mugged. Before he goes in there, there's a poster, uh, like a police advert, and Stanley is the policeman on that poster. Yes, yes, I remember it now. Yeah, so that 
It wasn't a obvious one. It wasn't yeah. a physically he is there. It's just a picture of him. Yeah, on Netflix, it's more subtle, which yes, I, I don't. It's I don't know there. if I like or dislike. No. Because it's it's less in your face, which I like, but he's not actually on the set, so it it goes no. both ways. But it, it was nice to see. It. I prefer I prefer that than the um. Daredevil when Jessica Jones where he was just a photo of him in the police station. A photo of him kind of in the back that you have to squint to try and see. Yeah, so I, I, did, I did prefer this cameo out of the Netflix series. Yeah, it was slightly less subtle. Hmm. And to be honest, yeah. I didn't spot it in Daredevil or Jessica Jones. Oh, didn't you? No, I didn't spot it initially. Oh, no, I, I spot it because I, I was thinking... Is he going to appear? Because I was looking out because I, I wasn't sure if he would appear because it's usually the films he appears in. So I was looking out. But um, another connection between between the MCU. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure how to word it for a second there, so so Don't I just worry. broke for a second. But um, another MCU connection was uh, there was that um, man flogging. Blu-rays yes. of the incident, the which I believe was the New York attack. Yeah, on the Chitauri. We yeah, actually, that's something that else with the Judas bullets. They say it's alien tech. Mm, so I, I like that because I think that actually is something that would happen if yeah, it were real. Because you know how you know I don't like it, but you know how there'll be like people putting up on the internet footage of like bad things that have happened people put it up on the internet i think you know if superhero fights were real someone would just get their camera out oh yeah try try and sell it so yeah, of course they would P thing is they'd make a fortune from it as well mm. like Marvel so i'm just surprised I wasn't, i'm surprised i didn't think of it before so that was nice no um, i I like the kind of the real world aspect that that brings in. Yeah, definitely brings more realism to it. You like my biggie photo? Me too. You know what draws your eye when you look at that? A crime. You wanna know why? Hmm? Because everybody wants to be the king. Did you feel like this was two seasons? Because... Yes. I felt like I it felt should like... have ended... They should have done one series, ended it um, episode six when Cottonmouth was arrested, and that should be, like, the happy ending of that series, and then have a season two where you think Cottonmouth's coming back, Wait, no, Mariah is it's killed him. She is even stronger. I think that probably would have worked a little bit better, but yeah, it still worked. That stretched out the story a little bit, or maybe shortened the season. Yeah, I think they just want to keep getting 13 episodes. Yeah. If they weren't so fixed on that, I think they would have just made this two series. And, um, what do you think of the soundtrack? The soundtrack, personally, I wasn't that keen on it, but that's just my taste. I prefer the Daredevil soundtrack. Okay. We have differing opinions here, because I thought it was, um, really good, because... You get that thing sometimes of people, um, especially thanks to that new video that came out a while ago, can't remember when, uh, people, that's people's main complaint about Marvel, I think. One of the biggest complaints, other than that people don't die, is the soundtracks aren't that good. Yeah. And I, I somewhat agree, but Guardians well, of the Galaxy, brilliant soundtrack. Uh that was and, an amazing soundtrack. Yeah, 
and now Luke Cage. I thought Luke well, Cage I did thought, have a really good soundtrack. I thought it was perfect for that, but it's just not my sort of music. Yeah, it's it's not my sort of music either. I thought it worked it perfectly. It fits so though. well, and you know, it's it's not bad music. It's good no, music. No, it's good music. It's just not what I'm personally into. And um, take this DC. This is diegetic music. This is diegetic soundtrack, which is a million times better than your non-diegetic um, music that just appears for no reason in the Suicide Squad. Like, the Suicide Squad had a good soundtrack, but it had no plot meaning, and I, I prefer when it is a diegetic soundtrack. So, Guardians of the Galaxy, Star-Lord was actually listening to the music, who the call when no one obeys the law And there ain't no Iron Man that can come and save us all Power to the people and Luke Cage the cause And the cops got it wrong, we don't think Cage involved Look dog, a hero never had one Already took Malcolm and Martin, this is the last one I beg your pardon, somebody pulling the fast one Now we got a hero for hiring, he a black one Luke Cage There was Music actually playing And uh, I... I really liked how it um, blended both diegetic and non-diegetic soundtracks because I'm, I'm getting into like f <laughs> boring filmmaking terms here, but <laughs> but it starts off. Well, diegetic is um, something the characters can actually hear. Non-diegetic is um, what the characters can't hear. So a song that isn't actually playing. Yeah. So it starts off diegetic by showing you in um, Cottonmouth's club it playing so there's a reason for the music to be playing and then it cuts to a scene of Luke Cage doing something and the music continues playing and I thought that was really really smart because I, I just prefer diegetic soundtracks all the time yeah I do like it when they do that instead of yeah. just here is some background music mm. So yeah, there were some nice little references like um, the Shawshank Redemption reference, which did I pick up on that? I can't remember. Oh, you didn't pick up on that? I can't remember. I've I thought that was quite an obvious reference. I've personally um... never seen Shawshank, so what? I've personally never seen uh, Shawshank, so it's on Netflix. So yeah, I need to watch it. Yeah, it's it's really well made, but um. But see, if you don't know Shawshank um, Redemption, it's about a prison, and everyone in this prison claims that they're innocent, and yeah, so uh, there was a reference where they were talking about how Luke Cage went to prison, and um, Pops said to him, I thought you were innocent, Shawshank, so... Um, that, yeah. yes, I did so think that, on that. That, that was Sorry. nice... I think that is a nice reference because, well, it's it's just a nice reference. I don't know. <laughs> I can't explain yeah, that, it, which is a nice reference. Yeah, it's the little things that can make the difference. Yeah, that that is like a sort of sort of good joke versus. <laughs> I'm sorry for beating Suicide Squad up here, but better than Harley Quinn saying. Aren't I crazy? Aren't I hot? <laughs> I prefer the, like an actually well written joke like that. What? I so, never um, actually got to see Suicide Squad. Because... Well, just, just watch the extended cut. It'll probably be better, but then again, yeah. everyone thought the BVS cut was better. Was going to be better, but then I watched the ex extended cut. And the extended cut was worse because it made it longer, which meant you had to spend more of your time watching God. the film. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully Suicide Squad will be better in the extended cut because we'll hopefully get actual Joker story, actual backstory for yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, that is one thing I heard that um, Jared Leto was quite annoyed about. <laughs> yeah, because Harley Quinn, my favourite DC character, she has such a great backstory my favorite backstory of any comic character like even as wow. a marvel a marvel fanboy 
I think Marvel is better on every every other occasion apart from this one exception. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. All right, so are we about done? I'd say there isn't much left to cover. So one le one Ooh. last topic. Yeah. This will be very brief. This is whenever a Marvel thing comes out, I always like to think of the future of the MCU. How will this affect a uh, future? Or just whatever comes next. So yeah. that really depends on where you think this was set. Because it didn't mention the Accords from Civil no, War. That's what I was. That's what I picked up on. Yeah. So I think this was set before Civil War. Yeah. But so, then again, obviously it can't affect Civil War because we've watched it. Then uh, again, they always they've said that all the properties are set when they come out. What about the first Avenger? <laughs> that wasn't set when it came out. You know what I meant. <laughs> the end of that was set <laughs> when it first came out. Yeah, I, well, I think... All apart from Guardians 2. Out. I think this was set before Civil War. Yeah. But, um... I, it really depends on the future MCU if they are going to bring in the Judas Bullets because I think that would be interesting because um, it it's an effective way of taking down a superhero clearly so yes because it managed to take down the man that. with unbreakable skin yeah and uh, apart from that the only thing I can see this affecting will be Iron Fist because that being uh, in you'll have Netflix. Night Nurse in that. Yeah. And you might get Luke... I was expecting to see... Um, what's it, is his name Danny? Is his name Danny Rand? Oh, yeah. Danny Rand. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not as much of an Iron Fist fan. But I was expecting him to see him like make a cameo in Luke Cage just because I you know, didn't they have the that. comic connection and... I thought it would work the same way that Luke Cage was introduced in Jessica Jones. Yeah, but then again, none of them were introduced in Daredevil in either seasons. Fair, fair point, but... Apart from Claire, obviously. Mm. So... One other thing I did like, but I thought got quite annoying after a while, so Claire saying, I know a good lawyer. Yeah, that's obvious that that's well, either Matt or Foggy. But you don't mm. need to keep saying it. So, yeah. Um, uh, flaws, I don't think there were that many. No. Apart from that it was... I don't know the actress's name, but Mariah, her actress, was in Civil War as the woman that told Tony about her son dying. Yeah. That is the one thing that bugs me. That there are a few. Got... There are a few nitpicks, but nitpicks don't count because they're nitpicks. That is then the again, one solid flaw, I would say. The actress that played Star Lord's mother when she was dying has been in another Marvel property as well. I can't remember which film it is, but she's been in two. What was the other one then? I can't personally remember at the moment. I think well, she was, would have looked completely different, though. It was she? a small role. It was a... Yeah, but li but these were both big roles. Obviously, Mariah yeah. was sort... She was sort of the second main villain. She was second to Cottonmouth, and then second afterwards. And then she was sort of the thing that somewhat kicked off Civil War, wasn't it? She was the first person to speak to Tony about it, to yes. get him thinking that way. So... If only, if only they'd have sorted that out. If only there was more communication between the TV and film side. But it's not. It doesn't ruin it. It's just one thing that's hard to look past for me. Yeah, that that sort of thing does get to me as well. It's meant to be a connected universe, yet they use the same actress twice. In yeah, different roles. I mean, yes. There's Shane, like 
the Hulk, the Hulk um, actor changing that. That oh, they, they were they were starting off, so it's forgivable. But now I thought they were like into it now and making sure that everyone was the same. But evidently not. I, I think that with with the Hulk, I think that was just a casting choice that they figured they made wrong. Oh, and War Machine. Yeah, overall, nice series. Um, it was a good series. It. I I hope. Uh, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage are going to get together. So do I. But... Have a baby and have Squirrel Girl as the babysitter because I want Squirrel Girl. <laughs> oh my in, god! In yes. the MCU. I hope. I so hope that that actually happens. That they actually bring her in. Yeah. Well, I know the Russo brothers said they're interested in it. So. I think she she could work. Well, they haven't got a children's Marvel uh, MCU TV series. So I almost, almost said Marvel, but they do have Marvel. No, they've series. got plenty of Marvel series, but not but, an MCU one. Yeah. So Squirrel Girl, perfect choice. <laughs> where she yeah she she is a bit childish. I'll admit. I love her, but she is a bit childish. <laughs> So that will work out as something that you know you can watch with your family, and yeah. let's just end the video there. Yes. Say let's... goodbye to the you to the audience. I will see Bye. you whenever. Stay, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what, what sort of ending is that? Stay, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs>